Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode three of the video series where we're taking a look at On One Photo 10. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Enhance. Now, I originally was going to do this from Lightroom, but really the Enhance module of On One Photo 10 and the Develop module of Lightroom are very similar. There's a lot of overlap there. So I really don't think that a Lightroom user would be using Enhance that often. I think more likely someone that is using On One Photo 10 as a standalone product would use the Enhance module. That is why I'm in the Browse module of On One Photo 10. And we're going to be doing these two images. Now, real quick, let me say before we start that On One Photo 10 apparently saw the first two videos I did on their product. They emailed me during the week a discount code that you guys could use to save 20% off everything in your shopping cart. So if you're gonna buy the product, look in the description below, you'll get a link to On One Photo 10 and the discount card uh, code, and you might as well sell, save 20%. Now, I mentioned we're gonna do these two images. We'll start out with the image of Buffalo, and I'm gonna go over here and click the Enhance icon. Now, one thing, On One Photo 10 is not a true raw editor unlike Lightroom, which is a raw editor. So we have to create a copy of the raw file. This is a Sony raw file and create a copy in a format that is supported by On One. And we have three choices, Photoshop, TIFF, or JPEG. I strongly suggest that you pick Photoshop or TIFF. Uh, they have a lot of um, dynamic range, There's a lot of advantages. They basically, let's just say they hold more information. There'll be more information available. Now, if you want to re-edit the photo, meaning you're gonna go in and you're gonna move some sliders around and then you're gonna come out of it and then you're gonna go back in and you want those sliders right where you left them, you should click this box here. This is for a smart photo re-editable re -editable PSD. So that means it only works with the Photoshop. If we try to use TIFF or JPEG, you'll see it's grayed out. So it only will work with Photoshop. Now, the advantage of this, obviously, is you could re-edit. You could go back in and all your previous edits are there and you could change them. The disadvantage is the file will be much larger. It's just going to create a much larger file. So if you're limited on drive space, you may not want to do that. The, also, it, it's a little slower when it saves and opens the file when you have this checked. So I'm not going to have that checked. All right. Color space. Um, I, I use Photo RGB until I'm ready to print it or do something else. So I keep my working, as I'm working on an image, I keep it on Pro Photo RGB. Bit depth, uh, I usually will keep it at 16 bit. 300 will work too. Resolution, 300 is perfect. Uh, when you're ready to export the image to you know share online or something like that, you could change that to 72 in the export module. Uh, you won't do that here. Um, if you're using an Epson printer, they recommend you have resolution at 360. So uh, right now 300 is fine. So I, I usually will keep these settings. If I wanted to keep them forever and have this box never pop up again, I would click right there. But I'm going to leave it because sometimes I might change it a little um, for you know whatever reason. So we're going to click OK. So what it will do now, it will take this raw file and it will create a uh, Photoshop file from it, a PSD file, and it will open up in On One Enhance. Now, on the left, we have this little tool palette, and we're going to go in a little bit more detail on some of these tools in a minute. Right now, I just want to talk to you about the crop tool. If I made this a smart image, the crop tool would be grayed out. You cannot crop a smart file or a smart image. I'm not sure why but you just can't, not with on one at least. So um, if you need to crop your image, make sure that you are not using a smart image, all right? Below that, we have the perfect eraser, and I'm gonna show you that in the picture of my son, Joe, along with the retouch brush, the red eye removal tool, I'll show you that also. We have this hand tool, when we're zoomed in, and you can see up here on the right, we could zoom in at different percentages. And when you have the hand tool active, you could just drag around the image like that. Here we have a view tool. And with the view, view tool, you could click to zoom in. You could hold the Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, and it will zoom out. 
Also, you could kind of draw with the tool like that, and it will zoom in to that degree that you drew in. You could go back to the fit right there by clicking there. Now, real quick, let's just go over the crop tool. If I click on that, you could see up here are the tool uh, qualities up here of what we're going to do. And freeform means you could just like really just not worry about you know your crop. You're just cropping it any way you'd like. Then it has original ratio. So this image is in a 3 to 2 ratio, so it's going to keep that ratio, as you could see. Um, it has all different. I mean, you could go through these square and so on and all these different choices. To the right of that, if you have an ex uh, uh, exact width and height in pixels, you could uh, type it in there. Um, to the Here we have a level, and the way that works is you would click on it and you get the level tool. You might be able to see it in my uh, cursor right there. And you would go along the horizon, and if the horizon were crooked, you would just draw around the crooked horizon, and then it will straighten your image. Um, if you don't like using that, you could also use this little level right there. This is like to rotate the image. We don't need, obviously, this is shot correctly, so we don't need to rotate it. If we just want to get out of this, you just hit the escape key on your keyboard. So that's the crop tool. Over here we have presets. It comes with favorites, which were pre-populated. I didn't put those in there. We have these corrections, auto levels, and stuff like that. Behind, below that we have enhancements, and below that recently used, which I never really recently used any, so they're all the same. Uh, if we go like to our hand enhancements or any of these, if you look right here, there's this little grid. If you click on that, you'll look at all the enhancement presets side by side so you might be able to choose one better over another. I'm just going to hit escape to get out of there or you could click right here and it will go back to the to the uh, main screen. All right so I'm really not going to use the hand tool or the uh, crop tool so I'm going to click on the hand tool and what really you know the reason why you're in here is to do some processing to the image and that's over here on the right hand side. Now we have these five different tabs. The top tab is quick fixes, and I could tell you right now that I probably would never do anything in quick fixes, but I'm going to show it to you nonetheless. We have two different sections to quick fixes. We have these little rectangles here, auto tone, auto color, and, and fix focus. If I just want to quickly auto tone the image, I would click there. If I want to just quickly auto color the image, click there. Nothing. It's it's got perfect white balance, so nothing really happened. And if I want to fix focus, click there. Now, i got to say about focus, if you didn't focus correctly in your camera, you're never going to be able to fix focus in post. What that does, it just adds sharpening to the image, right? So that, that's what that does. Now, you could turn them off and on by just clicking on them, you know, and, and they're off and on. Below that, we get a little more control now. Instead of just clicking Auto Tone, if you prefer, you could just change exposure by clicking either the plus and or the minus sign of this control. Shadows, we could change here with this control. As you can see, it changes the image. And so on with all these different controls. Even that, even though that gives you more control, that's something I would never use either. I would prefer to do everything in the color zone Tone, color and tone adjustments panel, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, if you do adjustments and you don't like them, each of these panels in the corner will have a reset all link. So you just click there and you'll reset everything back to its zero position. Now, I mentioned I prefer to do the color and tone adjustments right here, where I have the actual discrete sliders. I could move them and see the uh, changes. Now, I must say these controls here like exposure if I click plus you'll see the slider move so it is actually moving the slider but it's just a lot easier to just take the slider and move it <laughs> so that's what I would prefer to do all right so what you do you probably would start with color and tone adjustments right here we have an auto uh, button right here that's the same exact thing as here so same exact thing. So you could click it there, click it there, whatever you want to. But again, I don't ever use auto. I'm going to do this. So exposure is exactly what you think it is. It turns exposure up or down. If you want to reset a slider back to its zero position, just double click on the name and it puts it right back to zero. 
contrast, I think this image could use a little contrast, so we'll put contrast up. You could, of course, take it down, but we're going to take it up. Shadows, I like opening the shadows up just a touch on this image, maybe to there. Highlights, I like bringing highlights down on images that have clouds in them because it helps bring out a little more detail in the cloud. Cloud. So we're going to bring that down. Now whites and blacks. To adjust these, I'm going to give you a kind of a trick or a system to adjust them. What you do is go up here to the histogram and open the histogram. You can see there's the histogram. And you can see in the corner of the histogram, there's two little triangles. Click either one. Doesn't matter. This one is for highlights. That one is for shadows. But they both, when you click on it, it turns them both on. So click it. And you'll see that this blue came in the screen. Do you see it over here? That blue means that our black is clipping. We have clipping blacks. Now, I don't see any clipping highlights or whites. If we had clicking clipping whites, we'd see red. And to help that along, I'm going to take this white slider, and I'm just going to move it all the way to the right. And you might be able to see right in here. See that red there? That is because we're clipping. What clipping means is the histogram is moved off its edge. If it goes off to the right, you're clipping highlights or clipping whites. If you're going off to the left, you're clipping blacks or you're clipping the shadows. Now, typically you don't want to clip too much because if you print out the image, if it was clipping black, you just get a bunch of black ink, no detail on the print. And similarly, if you were clipping whites, you wouldn't get any ink on the paper because you're not, you don't have any detail at all. So you want to avoid clipping usually. All right, I'll say usually and I'll explain more in a minute. So what you would do, what I suggest you do, is you turn these indicators on. You look for the red and you look for the blue. We'll do the red first since I have it zoomed in. And what we're going to do is you just take the slider, the white slider, and you move it until all the red just goes away. Okay, so that is a perfect technical uh, white point. All right, so we set our white point. Now I'm going to go back to fit, and we have this blue down in here for, you know, we're clipping our shadows still. So we're going to go to the black slider, and we're going to move that to the right. And it didn't take much. Did you see that? See, if I go left, see how it's really clipping? Let's just go. Just till there, it's gone, which seems to be right about there. All right, now that is a perfect technical adjustment for the blacks. That's a perfect black point. But I encourage you not to do it by the book because one way you really add your personality to your image is that you adjust it to your own bias, your own likes and dislikes. Personally, I like my blacks to be a little blacker. So I like to take this slider so it clips a little, all right? So I like a little clipping. So I'm going to have it clip a little. That's my own personal like. You might prefer your whites to clip a little. Um, you might prefer everything to clip or nothing or be really inside. You'd like to push that in histogram way inside maybe. That might be the way you like to do it. So I encourage you to experiment in and make it your own. You don't want your image to look like an Anthony Morganti image. You want it to look like place your name here image. Okay. So the white and blacks are adjusted. I'm going to turn off the clipping indicators by just clicking on the little triangle again. They're off. Below that is detail. Those of you that use Lightroom, that's exactly like the clarity slider. We could go way up and you can see it gives this really HDR you know, look to it. Go way down and it's really blurry. Uh, one beginner's uh, mistake, they tend to overdo this slider, so be careful you don't go too much. If you go too much, it really will look garish. Uh, you'll uh, get haloing and things like that, so, so use it with caution. Um, I think right around 23 is nice for this image. Now, that's this color and tone adjustments. Below that is the color adjustments. Again, we have an auto uh, button here. That's the exact same auto that is there. Uh, but I'm not going to do it. Now, uh, typically, now this this image is color balance fine. There's really not a, I should say, a white balance fine. There's no, not a white balance issue. But sometimes you'd like to put a little bit of your own personality on the image. And this was kind of a cold day, so I'd like to cool the image off. So f for a creative purpose, I'm going to turn the temp slider down. 
not because I'm correcting any color problem. I just want to cool it off, all right? And if I go to the left, I just add more blues towards the image. If I go to the right, I'm adding more reds and greens to the image. So warmer colors that way, cooler colors this way. So I'm just going to cool it off slightly. Usually, whatever way you move the temp slider, you will tend to move the tint slider the opposite direction for these creative adjustments. So I'm going to move the tint a little bit to the right. All right, and that's it, just like that. I think that's fine. Now, one thing I got I forgot to mention is right here. There's a little drop down, and you could do like a auto toning, daily daylight, cloudy shade, and you could see all I got to do is hover over one of these presets and it will show on the workspace there. And again, I'm just staying with what I dialed in, but, but that is a little drop down there, don't miss it. All right, below tint is saturation. Uh, usually I don't do a lot with saturation, but it, uh, it does what it says. I mean, it's gonna saturate your colors. So as you move it to the right, you're enhancing the colors, uh, increasingly enhancing the colors. The difference between saturation and vibrance is that saturation will um, increase the saturation of all the colors in the image. Vibrance will increase the saturation of the colors that aren't already saturated or aren't already near saturation. So vibrance is a little bit of a of a more subtle adjustment. Okay, as you can see, I turned that all the way up. It's a little more subtle. So in this case, in this image, I think moving both a little bit to the right, it looks pretty nice. Now. If there was a person in this image, when you turn saturation and vibrance up, it tends to make their skin look red. And you could click this little checkbox and it will reduce the vibrance on the skin. So that's a real handy thing. Now, if you have an image that the white balance wasn't set correctly, like you took an, an image in, in a hospital and it has these fluorescent lights and your camera was accidentally set on cloudy and your image is just color balance is all off, you would click this little uh, eyedropper and you would look for something that's supposed to be gray in the image and you would click on it and then that would give the proper uh, white balance to the image now in this case obviously it's not applicable so I'm just gonna hit command Z will will undo a step if you have a PC it's control Z and that just undoes a step I'm going to step backwards so this um, color tab is done. As a matter of fact, this first main tab is done. We have it adjusted very nice. If I want to see a before and after, I could hit this preview button in the left-hand corner. There's before and there's after. You also could hit the backslash key on your keyboard before and after. All right, next up is vignette. The way these next three uh, adjustment sections work is you have this one part which is just quick where you could just do a, like a subtle vignette real quick a strong vignette or just edges which is more rectangular if you like that you're in and out it's really fast if you want a little more control you could click this little expose triangle and it will open up showing more sliders the next little part shows some presets so you click there and you could just hover over these and you could see there's what a burnout preset looks like a center spot edges edges to black and so on so you could go through these uh, you know find one you might like if you don't like either of those you could go down and actually move the sliders yourself and the first slider is brightness if you go to the right you'll get white vignette if you go to the left you get a darker black vignette I prefer a darker vignette it helps draw everyone's attention to attention towards the center the next is the actual size of the vignette, meaning how much does it encroach into the center? If you move it to the left, it's going to be a, a thicker vignette that's coming more into the center. And if you move to the right, it's going to stay towards the outside a little more. So you can move that around to get that to where you like it. Let's keep it heavy so I could show the other two a little more readily. Feather is you can make it really a distinct vignette or a really heavily feathered vignette or somewhere in the middle. Roundness is how round right now we have this oval shape i guess it's more round uh, if i go to the left you can see it's more like a border it's more rectangle if i go to the right then it's real round all right so you could dial in the vignette that you like uh, with that also if you want to see a before and after but you don't want to like be a, see a before and after of the entire 
processing, you just want to see the vignette, just click the checkbox here. There's before the vignette, and there's with the vignette. You can see I have it on there pretty strong. So uh, let's turn brightness down a little bit. Okay, there's before or after. Still strong, but we'll leave it for sake of time. Now, there's also style. You could go normal, subtle, and soft. All right, and then you could turn it off and on and compare before and after. That looks pretty good stuffed. Now, there's not a person in the shot, but let's say there was, and let's say their face was over here. Typically, you put a vignette on, the vignette would start encroaching upon their face. So what you could do is you could take this tool right here, click on it, and you see you get this little cross here, and let's say that person's nose was right there. If I click there, the vignette gets centered on that spot where I clicked, which in the case would be their nose. So you could really um, offset your vignette wherever you want on your image. I wish Lightroom had that right there. So that is a nice feature. Uh, so in this image, it doesn't need it. There isn't a person in the shot or something off, off to either side that is significant that I want, want the vignette centered on them. So that is the vignette tab. Next is the sharpening tab, and like the vignette tab, it has these kind of three different sections. You have this quick sharpening where you could just click fix focus, and I, I will reiterate that you're not really fixing focus, you're just really sharpening the image. Um, then screen, which is a more subtle sharpening for images that you would share on the internet. And then print, it gives it a little more sharpening because the absorption of the ink in the paper, it sharpens your image just a touch more. So those are some quick sharpening presets. If you open the expose triangle, we also have these presets which are a little more in depth. Fix focus again, print general high, and you go through. And again, if you hover over them, you'll get a preview of what it looks like right on your image. So that's those presets. Then below that, we have the actual sliders. Now, there's a drop down here, and there's three different types of sharpening. High pass, progressive, an unsharp mask. Now those of you that are older, <laughs> that are like me and that used Photoshop for a lot of years, know that we used to sharpen in Photoshop using either a high pass filter or an, or an unsharp mask. Those are here because some people are just familiar with those and they prefer to use those. If you prefer to use those, fine, use those and the uh, sliders will change as they would as though you were using Photoshop. If you're not familiar with the Photoshop and you don't care, use Progressive. It does a great job. All right, Progressive works great, and that's what I'll use most of the time. The first slider is a mount, and what you're doing when you're sharpening, you're actually, the program is looking for edges, and it's increasing the contrast of the edges. And what the amount does, it just increases that contrast on those edges. And if you go way too high, although this image it's not showing it, you'd start to get haloing because you're going to be um, increasing the contrast too great on any edges, especially edges that are real dark next to real light, you'd get haloing. So you don't want to overdo it. All right. So, so you want to usually zoom in, you would get this view tool or you would go up here to the, like click on a hundred and zoom in and look for something like you want to sharpen and you want to be sharp. Let's say the, the shingles on these uh, roofs over here and you just keep turning this up turning it down until you get it and it doesn't look like it's haloing or causing noise or ghosting or anything like that. Now the detail slider, the best way to think of this is if it's all the way down, we're just looking for the edges, those high contrast edges, and we're sharpening those high contrast edges. If we move detail up, you're going to start looking inside of those edges, and you're going to start adding texture maybe to something that has texture. It doesn't have a distinct edge, it just might have a rough surface. And then you'd move detail up because you want that to be sharp. In the case of these uh, shingles here, we want probably those you know, to show that they're there. So we're going to turn detail up a little bit and and amount. So we can move around a little bit. You probably balance between these two until you get it pretty much how you like it. Protection is normally we don't want to sharpen the entire image. We just want to sharpen like, you know, parts that need be, but there might be expansive sky in your in your image. 
that you don't need to sharpen or if it's a portrait you don't want to sharpen every pore on their face so you would turn protection on and again you would stay zoomed in and you would look at the part you don't want sharpened and you would keep tweaking that up until it takes away if it was a person's face the pores don't look as prominent anymore but it's still sharp enough where their eyes their iris and their lips and their hair are still very sharp and that's when you would use this protection slider also if you typically you'd get a lot of noise in dark areas of the photo so you could protect dark so you turn this up and you're not going to be sharpening any of the dark areas of the image similarly protect lights won't sharpen any of the light areas of the image protect skin is what i mentioned if you had a, a portrait you don't want to sharpen their pores so you would turn that up all right to help not sharpen pores of people's skin and you know that and protection this this slider here do similar things these three and that so you would these are just more refined versions of this so you would use all four though to get the correct sharpening for your image and again if you if you just adjust them all you don't like it you can click reset that is in every single tab all right finally we're on to noise reduction and again it, we have this preset subtle noise reduction moderate or strong I strongly su suggest that you stay zoomed in to 100% and look at the, you know, the effect that the noise reduction has. You could see there's definite noise. I'll zoom in even more in the sky and I'll click strong and you could see how it smooths it right out. But we're also losing some of our detail. So that's the deal with sharpening and noise reduction. You don't want to sharpen so much that you're sharpening noise. And you don't want to use noise reduction so, so much that you're losing detail. We need to find a happy medium. All right, so if you don't like any of these presets you or these you know, adjustments right here, we could go to these presets. And again, you could hover over them and it will show the effect on your image. This is going to be a little more subtle. Usually you won't see the, uh, the effect quite as strong, but you could do that there with those presets. Or we have the actual sliders. Luminance noise is the common noise, looks like film grain that you get from digital cameras, and you could just turn that up and it will help smooth everything out. The idea is you want to turn it up enough where you're smoothing out the noise, but you're not losing detail. All right. Color, again, you just do that and keep eyeballing the image and see, you know, if when you start losing detail, then leave it where it is. Color noise, usually you kind of get red, greens, sometimes cyan, magenta, purple little spots, little, little spots in the image, and you would move this up to get rid of those spots. There's none in this image. My experience with the slider is it doesn't take a lot. You just got to move it up a little and it will get rid of those spots immediately. Now, detail, if you have you you find you have a lot of noise and you had to turn luminance way up and you lost some detail, like in your roof here, you could take this slider and move it to the right and it will help bring that detail back. Do you see how I have luminance noise reduction all the way up? And I'll turn this slider up. And it takes a second to render. Now you can see how it brought that back. So that helps bring back some of the detail that you might have lost from this luminance slider what you need to be careful of is that you're not bringing back the noise <laughs> all right so so that's another balancing act that you have to do now you may want to just add noise reduction to a specific color or a specific uh, part of the image that is real dark or something if that is the case you would use this eyedropper and you would click on it. Let's say I just want to learn, you know, get rid of noise reduction in the sky right up in here. So I'm going to click there. Now it's just applying the noise reduction there. And what this range is, is, well, how much outside of that is, is the program going to look to like blur the edges more or less? And I think if you hover over, it says something really funny. Adjust the range or fuzziness of the selection. So we're selected here and we're just going to fuzz it out a little bit more. And, and adjust more around it. That's what that slider does. To tell you the truth, I don't think I ever really use this right here. I'm always using something up here. So uh, again, there's a drop down there and you could just go to greens, blues, reds, specific colors like that um, to just add noise reduction to that. When you're done, you could go back to the fit view. All right. And this image is done. Now, I really didn't do sharpening and noise 
introduction uh, specifically to this image. I was just kind of showing you how to do it. But we could look at the before and after. There's before and there's after. And you can see Enhance did a really nice job. Now we're going to save it by clicking right there. And it will now save this image, save all our adjustments, and it will go back to um, browse. Now, um, I mentioned that we didn't do a smart image here, so it saved relatively quickly. It would have been a little longer had we not done, or had we done a smart image. It would have taken a little longer to save. So there's our processed image there. And there's the original image there that was a Sony RAW file. Now we're going to go do this picture of my son Joe, mainly to just show you a couple of those tools. And uh, we're going to go up into Enhance. And we're going to, again, uh, do uh, Photoshop layers and the same settings as before and just click OK. And now it's going to create this uh, Photoshop PSD file and open up in, in Enhance. Now. I'm not going to do anything over here for now. I just want to show you these tools. Uh, the one I didn't show you first was the eraser. It works great. It, you know, on one doesn't say it's content aware because I think that's trademarked by Adobe, but it's content aware in my opinion. Watch, I'm going to take this little mark right off his forehead. I just got to click and it just takes a second and it really just took it away like it was never there. Now, you can uh, just you know, click through and get blemishes off people's faces, um, sensor spots on images. It works great. You don't have to just click. You could draw too. So you could just draw with it like that and it will make stuff go away. Um, if you had an image and uh, it had um, it, like it was a landscape and there was a piece of an old cup laying in the middle of your landscape and you wanted to get rid of it, you could just get rid of the cup. It makes it disappear. It really is a very, very strong tool. Um, up here, we have the tool uh, like properties or the size of the brush. You could um, change it three different ways. You could go right here over the word size and it turns into a scrubby slider. And if you click with the left mouse button and slide to the left, you're gonna get a smaller brush. And if you click to the right, you could get a larger brush brush. You could also click this little drop down. You have the actual slider there. And I think the easiest way is you use the um, the bracket keys on your keyboard. The left bracket key makes it smaller. The right bracket key makes it larger. If you use a Wacom tablet, you would click right here and you could adjust um, the, the size of the brushes is, is adjusted by the pressure you apply with the stylus on your Wacom tablet. I'm not using my Wacom tablet right now because the battery's dead and I was too lazy to plug it in. So I'm just using a mouse. Now the other tool below it is the retouch brush. Uh, this is very powerful also. We also have similar controls. We have the size, which are adjusted the same way I just showed you. Feathering, um, how abrupt do you want the brush to work? You mainly use this brush to soften skin, and to get rid of light wrinkles and things like that. So a good amount of feathering usually looks pretty good. So I'm gonna leave it at 50. Then we have the actual opacity of the brush. I strongly recommend that you don't run it at 100 because you're really just going to obliterate wrinkles and things like that. And usually that doesn't look natural. So you could build up. You could use a smaller opacity, let's say of, of 20 or something like that. And then you could um, do it repeatedly and it will build. So you could see on here, let's zoom in just a little bit. Also, instead of going to the hand tool and clicking here, you could hit the space bar on your keyboard and you'll turn into a little hand tool there. All right. So what we want to do is I want to get just a little smaller one maybe. And I want to soften this wrinkle. All I got to do is paint on it like that. And it will take a second. And now it did it once. I could do it again. And like I said, you could just keep building on this and building on it. And that's what I would recommend you do. There's before. And there's after, before, after. So I strongly recommend you don't go to gangbusters with this tool, meaning don't, don't go at 100%. So just keep it around 20 maybe, and then just repeatedly do it. And there's before, and there's after, before, after. So you could soften things like that, and you could soften skin. Now we're going to use the actual um, 
portrait module for some of this so I'm not going to be doing a lot here but this really does help um, does a nice job so that is this adjustment brush or retouch brush okay finally we have the red eye removal tool now I don't really have any images with anyone with red eyes that of course is happens if you use a flash that's really close to your lens or your camera and the light from the flash will bounce off the back of the person's eye back through your lens and you get this red glow now to get rid of it, it's really easy and I could show you on this image you just click the tool over here and you get a brush you adjust the size of the brush as we did the previous two brushes and what you want to, is the brush size to just cover the red wherever the red is and usually it would be right there on their eye you'd hover over it and you would click once with the left mouse button and it will move the red you do the other eye just make the circle just big enough by using the bracket keys probably just so it covers the red of the eye and click once and it will get rid of the red of the eye and it's as simple as that and that's really how you use enhance and on one we'd click save and it will save the image and bring us back to the browse module now in the next episode of this video series I'm going to use on one effects and I am going to do that from Lightroom because I think a Lightroom user would use a f uh, on one effects a lot it's really a powerful um, effects editor uh, for lack of a better way to put it so look for that in the next episode I'd like to remind you that there is a discount code in the develop or in the uh, description below you could save 20% off your purchase from on one and I'd like to thank them for supplying that to us all right that's it for this episode I'll talk to you guys soon